iconic landmark, Cape Horn, is 600 miles away. At the helm of camper, Rob Salthouse is anxious to get there. Nice to get going, you know, and, and uh, you know, although it's a, a pain that we've got to continue and do this little bit, and uh, it'll, it'll make a little rush for the next leg, it's uh, nice to do it and complete it, so I'm quite looking forward to just getting down around the horn. And, it's still quite a long way, it's getting colder. We just head down here a bit, keep turning left, the breeze slowly lifts us until we're running downwind. Still a big low coming through on the 11th, nine forty something hectopascals. So I'll try and get around the horn and start getting north before then. Navigator Will Oxley has a it's few concerns windy. of his own, and skipper Chris Nicholson just wants a clean boat. A whole continent away on Group Armour, and barring further accidents, third place is secure. There's even time for yeah, a sea my, storm. My first reaction was complete shock. Uh, it was unexpected, and we felt we were comfortable in the conditions. thing to do is to get everybody on deck, uh, make sure everybody is prepared and then start to save the boat, the sails and what we could on the mast. I had to climb up what was remaining of the mast uh, and cut away the mainsail. In the process of cutting away the mainsail I managed to cut my wrist. So what, what had happened was as I was arms around the mast the knife had gone into the wrist I'd had to pull the knife back out with the wrist again. Uh, so I sort of knew that it was quite deep into the wrist and then you could see it was long. So I was very, very nervous. Uh, when I returned to the deck, apparently I was as white as a ghost. And Martin Kreta and Martin Stromberg saw this and took me aside away from the damage and into a safe area to inspect what, what had happened. Brad uh, came down the rig, uh, we uh, realized uh, quickly that uh, something wrong had happened. Uh, there was quite a bit of blood uh, coming down from the rig. And uh, we could see in uh, Brad's uh, eyes that uh, he was in shock. Uh, after we've uh, just uh, stopped the bleeding, uh, we brought him uh, downstairs to a more secure spot because there's a lot of uh, things hanging down from the broken mast. And after uh, we talked to Dr. Antonio, our team doctor, we, we decided to staple him together. So uh, we took out the staple gun and uh, put uh, five staples in him. <laughs> And uh, now he's uh, as good as new, I think. So it's only sort of just come out now because I asked uh, that we didn't put it in the media earlier because I wanted the chance to tell Rob and my girlfriend and my family. Uh, wouldn't have been nice for them to be on the shore and hear that we dropped the mast and I'd cut my wrist. So uh, we sort of took our time and just made sure that everybody knew who needed to know first. Back on camper, where watch leader Stu Bannatine well aware that fitness comes from. Oh, I just play the daily routine, Hamish. Try and stay in shape for this long delivery. A few incline push-ups. Yeah, I'm very, 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 very hot now. Put my gear on. Finally, Frank Kamas 
building the legend as Group Armour sailed into a beautiful sunset towards Italy, less than 200 miles away. Epic stuff.